In this episode, we're going to take a look at my secondary Splinterlands account, how it's performing and what I've been doing with it lately, as well as try to improve it by spending some glint and buying some cards and some chests, but also from the aspect of the uh, new player, why this uh, lower leveled uh, deck is a good goalpost for a person getting into the game and uh, just for comparisons purposes, what they can expect out of it, a similar leveled deck. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey, all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. If you continue to like this kind of Splinterlands game-based coverage, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Okay, with that said, um, usually when I make a Splinterlands uh, video, um, I'm going at it from the aspect of my primary account, which is much higher level than my secondary account. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I keep my secondary account going, and it was originally made a few years ago just with uh, extra cards I had on my primary deck. Um, and it's been used for various purposes over the years. However, at this point, um, it is it has been played uh, by the Archmage bot in Wild, and I do keep the, uh, the Wild Pass going on it. Uh, it is in the KGM Jam Guild, and it does okay. I mean, uh, it's not the greatest. It doesn't have, like I said, it has extra cards in it for the most part. Now, over the last year or two, uh, as the rewards cards have built up on it, it has greatly helped this account out. Uh, it's an example, if you're relatively new to the game, uh, Soulbound reward cards are available in-game for um, basically playing and putting a little bit of money into the, the game as far as investment goes. Uh, uh, staking your SPS and buying cards and stuff. But uh, in return, you do get um, uh, Soulbound reward cards. Now, they used to be available, they used, used to get chess daily and uh, season chess, but now you can still get chess, but now we earn Glint and you take Glint um, and you go into the reward shop and you choose what you want to buy. So that's where we are now. Um, I just wanted to uh, set the scene for you. Uh, what we have here is an account that's much lower level than what my main account is. We can go into um, the cards here, and there's a lot of older cards here just because they have some of my alpha collection in here, and they're all level one, so they're not gonna make a whole lot of difference here, so don't let that sway you. But you can look along in here, and most of these cards are level two, three, four, some are five and six, but they're overall not that high of level cards. The highest level cards I'm going to have in this deck really are my summoners, which I purposefully uh, leveled up a little bit. And one of the main uh, changes I've made to this account lately has been with the older rewards card set going out, I uh, un, uh, unsoul bound uh, or freed up some of the extra summoners I had on my primary account shifted them over to this account so I could at least make my summoners over here level five. And I am thinking about going ahead and buying enough BCX to make them level six, um, just to kind of uh, be a nice, a uh, little bit higher level there. But as you can see, a lot of these other ones are just like level one, you know, level five, level one. Um, most of my major uh, summoners that I use mostly are the actual, the gold foil Chaos Legion, and I have them at level four. Once again, and well, this one's level three, that needs to go up to four. <laughs> but um, uh, this was primarily back when we had League Limits, it was a silver playing deck, and that's what it was made to be. Uh, I just wanted it right there, use my extra cards, uh, make it a little bit extra, you know, make a little extra for me on a weekly basis. Okay, so that's where we stand with this. Now, also, this account does not have very much SPS staked in it. So one of the primary earning um, prerequisites for the game now, Splinterlands game, is to buy Splinter Shards, the SPS token, and stake them. And the more you have staked, the more you're going to earn off of each one hand, okay? So you can see this account has just under five, that 44, 496 and I don't take any off this 
everything I've made on this account over the years, I've just rolled over and staked. But at this low level, it doesn't come in very fast. Now, you will notice that I do have a benefactor that is lending uh, this account 50,000 SPS, so thank you. Um, I do appreciate it, but I wanted to stick that out there so you can get an idea. And I did the numbers, I think 50,000 at this point is, um, let's take a look. No, it's not 35,000. Let's take a look at, just for the sake of argument, um, SPS is now at 0 0.007. and it's right at about $350, okay? So uh, a brand new player is probably not going to invest $350 in SPS uh, when they first start the game. However, it can be something that you shoot for over time as you continually roll your rewards, what you get off of playing back into the game and stake it, then uh, what you earn off of each win goes up. So it just kind of you know, they go up hand in hand. So, uh, of course, you do have to win <laughs> to, to get that. But to give you an idea of what you can expect, this last win, and it's sandwiched between a bunch of losses, but this last last win, I got just over one SPS, and I got a 262 glint. So, as you can see, uh, lately, uh, in the last uh, few weeks, the amount of glint that is earned in the bronze and silver leagues uh, that lower end has went up however this account is in gold so i did not benefit from that and you will see that i have 320 and a half thousand glint saved up have not done anything with this account yet since the changeover and that's what we're here to do um, but you can see that on a season by season basis uh, we have about what four days uh, four and a half days left um, and I'm at 35,000, only 30. So I'll probably finish the season around 40,000, something like that. Um, and the reason that number kind of sticks in my brain is because um, that's kind of what my budget is going to be on a season by season basis um, to spend the glint to bring the account up at this point until uh, the benefactor removes that 50,000 SPS and then my earnings will go down and we'll have to rejudge. But at this point, this account is in gold one, uh, working on diamond three. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sometimes this account gets into diamond three and it gets knocked down to gold one again. So you saw what kind of summoners and what kind of cards I was working with. But at this point, uh, I have just over a seven boost. Okay, now, with that said, uh, one of the primary ways I've been increasing the strength of this, this deck is through the Soulbound Reward Cards over time, which um, has really worked to my benefit, uh, especially for this account. Let's go in here and clear, and we'll go into Chaos Legion, we'll go into Rewards. Uh, let's take off gold um, and just look at regular. And you can see that the rewards cards are the highest level cards on this deck, in this deck. So you have four, five, level four, five, six. Uh, I think maybe six might be. Um, I do have a max level of Jin O'Shaughness because back in the day I bought a bunch of these. Love Jin O'Shaughness. Uh, he's a great price and a great performer. If you're new to the game, scoop you up one of these. Just go ahead and grab a max level just right off the bat. Great deal, great value. Uh, love Venari uh, Crystal Smith as well, but we're not here about that. We're just looking at the levels of the cards, and you can see the rewards cards have the little chain on them. At this time, you can unlock them and pay for them to unlock them to free them up and sell them, but that's not really what this video is about. I just wanted to emphasize that most of these cards on this deck or on this uh, account are pretty low level. Um, and the highest uh, level of the car, uh, the highest level cards are going to be the actual rewards cards and not like the extra cards I shifted over here from my other deck. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and go in the shop. We have 320,000 and a half. Um, and you know, I've been watching a few different videos over, um, uh, the last week or two since the, the new, um, you know, the. The prices went up for the rarity draws and the loot chests and the new uh, card set came out, which I need to start working on um, with this account. Also, uh, it must be said that merits are still a good use of your glint if you're playing the game um, because the, the merits will lead 
to, we do have some packs to open, but we will uh, open Gladius cases. So the merits and or the merits you get out of chests that you open up will help you get more Gladius cards. And the Gladius cards are the single hardest set to go ahead and level up. So we look at Gladiator cards right here, and you can see that this account has been playing for years. And even my primary account, I don't have them anywhere near maxed out, you know? So you can see most of these cards are level two, three, uh, yeah, two and three, one, two and three, you know, that's how hard these cards are to max out and they have some great synergies and their powers. They're very strong. So if you're playing in a brawl, you really need to be playing at least one, if not two Gladius cards per hand to really increase your chances of winning a hand. But with that said, let's go ahead and go back. I think you got my idea. Let's go ahead and look at the shop. This is going to be the first time I've bought any of the new set. And of course, we're going to go in and we are going to buy the first set, um, the first batch of merits. And that's going to be 2000. Uh, that's going to get me a pack, Gladius pack. That's more than welcomed. Okay, back to shop. Um, now, uh, after thinking about this, the um, expense of the legendaries, obviously you wanna get legendaries, right? But the expense for this lower end account, I'm really finding it hard to put my glint into the legendaries right off the bat. I don't think I'm going to. I think the value for this, um, this particular card set is going to, or for this card set, to this account is going to be in the commons, rares, and epics. Um, I've said this before, I think that as you go up in rarity, the cards do get stronger, but they get more specific use. In other words, the commons and rares are stronger in more applications and uh, across the board, whereas the epics and legendaries are really strong in certain search situations. So I think what I'm going to approach it from is what can give, give uh, start strengthening these, this deck right off the bat. And I think that is the common draws and the rare draws. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and just go right in with, um, I'm not going to do a full batch of common draws. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a half a batch. So we're going to do 200 and that's going to cost 30,000. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll get the animation here. Cross your fingers for me. I'd like to get start getting these cards up to, you know, decent playing strength. We're talking level four, five, six at least. Let's go ahead and reveal all these and we'll, we'll flip back through here. Um, once again, these are still pretty new to me. I've went through uh, most of them by now, um, but the, the synergies and the combinations are still uh, very new to me at this point. So after this, I'll go through and combine, and then um, we'll open up some more um, card draws. And at the end, oh, gold foil, nice. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you uh, the combination, what level they ended up being. Takes quite a while to uh, flip over 200 cards. Now the value of card draws is obviously you know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get one card per draw uh, on the commons, right? Whereas in chess, um, it could have several different other things, right? So it could have energy, um, it, you know, it could have cards, it could have potions, etc. There's a second gold foil. Okay. Just take a spin back through here. This Nimble Nook uh, Explorer does have protect. Always like protect. Talk a tag conscript with sneak and thorns, which I found was an interesting uh, combination. Um, not too high of speed, so I don't know. You know, it's an interesting combination because sneak would usually be middle of the pack somewhere, and then thorns usually best case scenario in the front. I don't know. Okay. We can talk about that another day. Let's go ahead and jump out of here. Close. Let's go ahead and go to the rare draws and let's do 50 rare draws. Spending a bunch of glint, but this uh, will give us a good foundation for this account.
Okay, review all. You also notice that this account does not have very many, if any, potions. So those will not be affecting uh, the card draws. Okay. Commander Slade is an interesting one for sure. And I do like Janie uh, Rebel with uh, the flank and the inspire. Um, Mariput Slinger is another interesting one. Once you start leveling up, it has a bunch of interesting powers that basically, um, I don't know what's a good combination for it, but it's going to slow uh, the other deck down in its tracks. So if you have a good combination for that, leave it in the chat or leave it in the show notes. Uh, okay, so we've got that. Now I would be, I, I really want to go ahead and get some epics. So let's get five epics. Do I even have enough? Yeah, we'll see if it lets me. I might be about, uh, probably that puts me just over 110,000, just roughly. So I think I'm doing okay. Let's go ahead and open them up. Olivia of the Brook. Oh, a gold foil. Gold foil epic. Nice. Um, Olivia of the Brook, I think, promises, once it hits level two, it gets the new power mimic, promises to be a very interesting, or it's already a very interesting card. Um, so we have, we are down to 213. So we're doing okay. Let's go ahead and buy some minor chests. Let's go ahead and go in with just, uh, let's do 50. Trying to be conservative. Eh, might as well use that one legendary potion that I've got. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and reveal all, see what we get. I was watching a video by Gathering the Magic who did all the, the numbers uh, comparison-wise between chests and draws. It was very interesting. Um, if you're interested in the exact numbers and such and comparisons, check out his video last week. Um, the one thing that I found it hard to kind of pull down out of that is what what do all those big numbers mean to a low-end account? Because a lot of those numbers were do, done from, hey, buy a million worth of glint, you know, it's like low end accounts don't have that, right? So let's take a look at what we got here. We got a bunch of potions and we got a bunch of merits is what we got. Um, one, two, three, four, there's a rare, three commons, four, five, six commons, two rares, three, four, five, several cards, uh, a few rares and a smattering of commons plus a bunch of merits. Not much energy. That's all right. And a bunch of potions. Yeah, not bad. And finally, let's just do a few major chests. Just to... It's 25. Let's go ahead and do 25 major chests. Just to give you an idea. Okay. Bunch more merits. And once again, once you get up to major chests, you start getting multiple copies of uh, each card. Well, that's an epic, but only one BCX. Four BCX of a common, five BCX of a common, and a few energy, a uh, bunch of merits. Bunch of merits. Okay, so that means we will have. Okay, so I can buy five Gladius cases. So there was enough merits for four Gladius cases, and then I had bought the merits for the one. So, okay. So let's go ahead and go into the open. So I have a total of eight. Let's go ahead and just open them all at the same time for sake of time. See what we get. Chain's running a little bit slow tonight.
Come on. Whenever it gets like this, I'm kind of crossing my fingers that it uh, see like this so it doesn't fail. Okay. Oh, got a Quora. It's shaking, baby. Fina. Another go two gold foils. Okay. So let's take a look. Uh, the two gold foils here, uh, both commons. Not bad, uh, but uh, definitely the big takeaway here is the Quora, probably the most powerful card out of the set, though some people might argue with me. I play Fina once in a while. Um, Captain Katie is another favorite. Uh, a lot of these I play. Uh, a lot of these pl I play frequently. I'll play Edith. Uh, what's going on? Oh. Okay, I was interrupted by the Archmage bot playing a battle for me. Either way, uh, I got all the cards that I just bought with the Glint, got them all combined, give you a look at um, basically what I ended up with, spending about 175,000 Glint or so. So this is the set of common cards. Um, and you can see that most of them are at level three. There's one that was left at level two. And I don't know if I have all the common cards, but we're talking about level two and three here for commons. Now let's look at the rares. Um, and you can see the rares are mostly level ones and about half and half, level one, level two. Um, this is where you start getting into some interesting different powers and the cards start getting um, more specific use. Although I think commons and rares are still good generally across the board as far as strategies go. Let's go ahead and go up to Epic, and of course, Epic, um, all level one. Uh, we can see that we have all level one here. Um, and then Legendaries, no Legendaries, because I did not buy any Legendaries. Now, with that said, I'm not going to be able to afford to spend 175,000 Glint every week. But I do intend on sticking with the draws, and I do intend on just getting a few of each, uh, each week to just kind of improve them as we go. Because I feel like within a few weeks or um, a few seasons, so like two more seasons, I think these cards are going to be at the level of my other cards and or above them. And then from there on out, they'll just increasingly uh, serve to really bump up the power of my deck. Okay, this is me. Uh, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. Thanks for joining me. Um, how's your new set going? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in Splinterlands. Thank you.